Hi, I'm Matt Stevens, and I'm here today in rather misty Braithwell outside the Garden Rooms Cafe, about to hook up with a mate of mine, Russell Downing from Team NetApp Endura. Now he's going to be kind enough to take us on a bit of a spin around some of his favourite lanes. So let's go and have a bit of a chat to see what's in store. Hey Russ, how's it going mate? Long time to have a seat? About five minutes ago. Yeah, we have to take a seat. Whoa. So Russ, out of the saddle, a big project for you and your brother Dean. Tell us a bit more about that. Out of the saddle started, I think four years ago now it seems uh, it seems to have flown by and it was a bit of an idea that myself and Dean had uh, just at the end of the season to have a, a bit of a party. Right. Because you know it's like you've been, a, you've been away on tour all year and the phone never stops ringing when you come home. You want fancy coming out for a, for a meal, for a pint, for this that, and the other. So we come up with this idea of organising a party for charity, sure. get everyone in the same venue so then it, it's, it's good and it's just gone onwards and upwards from there now. I think last uh, last two week two weeks ago we had 260 people there. First off, it started I think 120. So you see where it's growing. And then two years ago we set up a cycling club. We've got a few few good friends who really enjoy cycling. Uh, we've let them sort of use the out of the saddle name. And uh, sort of the secretary John Smith is one of our best mates. He he runs that with a few of the other guys, and it's 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 quite hard to believe where it has actually come from really, I say it was a, a small gathering party, family family party of 120 people. Now we have to close the tickets at 260 a month before uh, and, I say, and then it's the clubs going onwards and upwards and now starting to organise sportives, uh, putting races on here in, in, uh, in South Yorkshire and yeah so Great. maybe in another few years who knows what we'll be talking about and where the uh, out of the saddle has gone. I'm a little bit nervous at the moment. I'm not overly fit. We're going out on the roads. Fortunately, we're not going up the strines. Big sigh of relief all around for me. <laughs> where, are you, where are you taking us today? Where do you want to go? Do you want to go flat? Do you want to go hills? Gently undulating is about my max at the moment, Ross, if that's cool. I think you should be okay then okay. today. So we are, here in South Yorkshire, we are spoilt for roads. We've got, we can go west, which You've just said we can go towards the strines, or then we can go into the, the flatlands of sort of Nottinghamshire, Lincolnshire. So that's where we're going to be heading today. We're going to go on some, yeah, some roads that I use a hell of a lot, either for steady rides, for motor pacing rides or things. And we're actually going to go through, uh, through Harworth, which is uh, obviously the home where Tommy Simpson grew up. And uh, yeah, so that's one uh, pretty, pretty special, uh, special village that's quite close to home it's a it's a working working men's village obviously it's still got the colliery there that's no longer in use me and myself are from a from a mining mining town so it's, it's very close to home and Sorry. we'll go and uh, squeeze through that and we may even go on the old uh, tommy simpson hey. uh, tommy simpson route where i think you sneakily got a win in there i, I think a few years ago I sneakily got a win back in uh, 1999 a long time ago but no russ it sounds wonderful mate i think let's get togged up Let's get rolling. Let's do it. Let's do it. So, Ross, we're now riding the opposite way for the course for the Tommy Simpson Memorial Grand Prix. Which is race that's still actually going, isn't it? Although it's not a top level race anymore. There's still other categories trying to win that trophy. And uh, again, we'll be coming to the top of the hill and coming out of Harworth the other way. And there's a lovely little sign just to have a look at. Yeah, I think uh, there's some new signs just gone up uh, around in little villages. And Tommy Simpson has actually uh, made it onto the sign with the yellow jersey, so that's, uh, that's pretty cool. And we do also have uh, another monument up here, which is identical to the one that's on, uh, on Bond 2. Yeah, the Tom Simpson Memorial was, was a great race. It used to remind me of a bit of a, Bel a Belgian Kavis, but it was a short circuit. Yeah, but a bit it was really fast, wasn't it? Yeah, a couple of nice little things on it. Uh, some really fast straight stretches. So, uh, and it was ridden like a Kavis. There was never any lull in the action. It was just full on all the way. Yeah. It was super fast, wasn't it? So here we are. Whew. Partway through our ride at the Harworth town sign, which has been recently re-erected in mem memorial of, of the great Tommy Simpson. A wonderful little picture there of him in his yellow jersey. 
clearly dropping a couple of riders there, feeling the pain, but uh, a lovely memorial rust to, uh, to the great Tommy Simpson. Yes, it's just recently been put up and we, we ride on these roads all the time, so it, it's, it's close to home as well, so you see this sign and uh, it gives you a good, uh, good feeling that you've been out training or doing your specific efforts and things, so yeah, it's, uh, it's great, great to see. I mean, uh, we've got a few, a few club riders riding up this hill, which uh, again, I know we keep talking about the Tommy Simpson Memorial Bike, uh, bike Race, but uh, this is basically the finish straight. It's, about, it's almost a kilometre long, it's a long, long drag, and these club riders about to ride past the Tommy sign. As you say, we're still inspired them on every club run every weekend, and uh, yeah, it's, uh, it, it's just absolutely wonderful. Morning. Morning, guys. Morning, Ross. You all right? There you go, mate. Living legend. <laughs> Living legend. <laughs> Yeah, we're just discussing the uh, ins and outs of the tussle with the Tom Thompson Memorial, 1999. And talking about, that's about 13 years ago, Russ, and here you are, racing at the top level back then, still going now. You're 34 years of age. When are you going to stop, mate? I mean, I, I, I think you could go on for the next four or five, six years. I don't want to, Matt. Cycling's great. Good lad. Uh, obviously, the sport's getting more and more popular, so why should I stop now? Obviously, yeah, I'm 34 years old, but uh, I'm still keen. I'm still, I'm still interested in really living the sport even more than I did probably when I was 24. So there's no reason to stop, and I'll keep going for as long as uh, as long as the sponsors and the supporters are there. I think it's you know it's true. I mean, more and more now, even at the highest level in the pro tour. You've got guys, for example, Chris Horn as one, and several others, some of the Spaniards. I mean, Inigo Cuesta, for example, rode until he was 40, rode his last Tour de France at 41. And there's a lot more guys in the mid to late 30s still performing at the best they've ever done. So I, I, I'm, I'm a, I, I think that it's a lot of it's in the mind, and as you get older, I'm sure you look after yourself a lot more. I mean, would you agree with that? I oh, definitely, yeah. I think uh, if you're younger, you think you can get away with more things than that, but. I think uh, as a bike rider you certainly tend to learn how your body works and what makes it tick and I think those sort of things are really good uh, good for you say like when you when you're getting on a bit you need to keep uh, keep everything in motion. Definitely I mean I remember having a chat with obviously Malcolm Ellett was a good example. I know we obviously had a you know mega successful career as a pro but essentially retired and came back at 43 but Mark said to me that he's never trained harder because he knows he's at a certain age, but he's never been more serious. And he said to me he wished he, he, re well, he relied on a lot of his natural talent in the early days, but later on, and train, has never trained harder in his mid to late 40s, you know? So, yeah, I, I think you can just keep going as long as you can. What a wonderful opportunity with the, with the, with the, the way the sport is. I and mean, we could wax an ankle all day about the way the sport is domestically. But it, it is, it was a wonderful time for you, Ross, to just keep going, I think. Yeah, so I wish, uh... I wish I was 10 years younger and, uh, same, same here, and same 24, here. but don't, don't we all, but I said the sport's, uh, sport's gone great with the, with the Olympics and uh, the Tour de France the last, uh, last year, so yeah. I mean, well, over the years, Ross, I mean, you've, you've had some wonderful wins. It could be, I don't know, if you think you've had you know, maybe 100 wins in your career, something like that? I mean, maybe, maybe, maybe that, maybe more, you never know, it's quite hard to tally up, but what's I've the kind been, of What's the victory that stands out the most, or the one or two victories maybe in the National Championship? But what stands out in your mind as a moment that you really look back on and savour? I think you definitely uh, probably hit the nail on the head with the uh, National Championships, winning the, winning the pro title there, uh, and then and then going on to yeah a rock, a rocky career, but. Another one that stands out is winning the Tour of Ireland. Oh man, that was amazing. That, uh, was, oh, that was a hell of a victory. That, uh, that obviously got, got, my, got my contract to the sky. And uh, I say it was a, a great victory because no, I didn't get handed. It wasn't handed to me on a the plate. They were under attack and I uh, controlled everything and then even uh, spun the tables and attacked them. And that was it. We were away for the. Uh, for the victory of the stage race then. I remember watching that on TV, I mean, it was awful weather conditions, a little bit like today, probably just as cold, but you just kept smashing them, mate, and uh, as I say, I think that opened a lot of people's eyes, and even before that, I think you deserved the contract, but well, that finally sealed it for you, didn't it? 
Yeah, definitely. So it was uh, it was typical uh, the Oxford winter training training uh, training day. The rain was pounding down, and it was like, oh yeah, this is like a Tuesday ride. Yeah. But now I say the the field and the, the riders that were attacking me was quite weird at times. I was looking across, and there was I think it was uh, Saxo Bank at the time and HTC, and I was like, okay, I've got to. Uh, I got to control these guys and I did that and yeah, it'll uh, never be forgotten that day, I don't think that. No, definitely not, definitely not. I'm certainly living a lot of people's memories, especially Phil Griffiths. Yeah. You know, poor guy. Yeah, he was, uh, he was over the moon, but uh, so there was everyone in England at the time, mate. But uh, no, it's, uh, it's great to talk about about the past and, and obviously about the future, but uh, whoop, hedge cutter. This is, this is real time TV, folks, here all the way.